Hi everybody, welcome to episode 9. I'm Corey, and of course you know me by now, I'm the Dungeon Master. I just wanted to say thank you for coming and listening. Make sure that you follow and subscribe, it really helps us out a lot. Knowing that people are listening, it really drives us even farther. Knowing that we're putting out content that people love. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but uh, enjoy episode 9. Hi everybody, I'm Corey, I'm the Dungeon Master, and welcome to Opportunity Roll. We've got something a little bit different for you this episode. Um, I would like to introduce you guys to the very first Group 2. Not that there's going to be... Okay, that came out weird. There's never going to be another Group 2, but what I'm saying is... <laughs> is I want to introduce you to the new players. I'm going to go ahead and go up the line here. We've got Laura. <laughs> Hi, I'm Laura. Um, I will be playing Myla, your elven uh, sorcerer of wild magic. We've got Elliot. Uh, hi guys, my name's Samir Elliot, and I will be playing Fairy and Gris, your vanilla human fighter. We've got Nicole. Hello everyone, my name is Nicole, and I will be playing Athera Leonor, your elf cleric. And we've got Will. Hello! My name is Will, and I'm playing Zachariah Talor, the uh, storyteller bard. And of course, as per usual, I will be your diggity diggity dungeon master. <laughs> 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 so, um, unlike group one, we really didn't recap what characters we were playing, so I would like to take a minute before the start of the episode and give everybody a chance to kind of introduce what their character looks like, just a brief description. And then kind of maybe a little bit of their background, whatever you're comfortable with. If, if you don't want to give too much and you want the viewers to find out as we play, that's okay. But I just want to give you the option. So let's go down the line this time. Let's start with Will. All right. Well, uh, Zechariah Talor is a redheaded human bard about... Uh, He's 27 years old, uh, with a nice uh, beard, very nicely trimmed. And uh, he uh, has grew up in a small town and hated it. And he traveled, and that's been his life for so long, is traveling and learning cultures and people. Okay, let's go with uh, Nicole. All right. Um, Athira is a high elf, so she's got the typical like pale skin, blonde hair, blue eyes. She's not she's not as vanilla as the human people apparently are, but she's pretty. <laughs> she's a pretty vanilla high elf character. Um, she's kind of on the short side, but she tries to act much bigger than she is. Um, she is honestly just kind of wandering around currently trying to find something for her to latch on to that she feels like it's something worthy of her to be doing. Okay, that's good. Um, how about Myla? Uh, yeah, so Myla, like I said, she's uh, an elven sorcerer of wild magic. Um, she's from a noble elven family. Um, all of them are sorcerers as well. Um, but yeah, she's the only one who really can't control her magic, and thus it kind of led to her being kind of secluded uh, for most of her life. Uh, she's only able now to break out um, and kind of explore the world. She's just trying to prove to herself to her family. Um, and she's a probably, I would say, about like maybe like 5'10 or so. Um, she is a high elf, but she has darker hair that she owns always has pulled back with her uh, of an ear sticking through um and she's basically always dressed in the robes of her uh her family that the colors of like a grayish skin tone not skin tone um a grayish color uh and uh she's very nervous really unsure of herself and she will constantly apologize for everything okay all right and our last but not least uh elliot why don't you tell us about uh, about your character? Well, uh, my name's Elliot. I will be playing Farian. Uh, medium brown hair, 
collects around Farian's head as he stands at almost two meters and weighs around 13 stone. Farian carries himself with a bold posture and looks like he is always ready to lend a hand. The fighter sometimes fumbles his words, but he rarely speaks ill of people, on purpose. What this warrior lacks in being influential with words, he makes up for by being a well-rounded warrior. Those that look into his eyes can find that they house a brown color. As for background, uh, my character is really a farmhand whose father read him stories of heroes, and he wanted to be a hero himself. So now he's taken up the adventurer's life for better or for worse. And let's see how it goes. Alrighty. So, I have talked a bit with uh, everybody. Everybody has... Uh, listen to a good bit of the lore and I've answered most of the questions. I'm sure there might still be some and I am happy to answer more if you guys have any. But for the most part, we are going to start in the Polk Plains, which is just north of Graydon. The Polk Plains is home to a lot of average type uh, towns um, full of very nice people or sometimes you might get the, the random occasion of some horrible people. It's a, it's a nice mixture. So the adventure is abundant. We're going to start off on the road. Three of you guys know each other and have been somewhat traveling together for roughly about two to three days. We're going to say three. The reason I say three and, and relatively know each other is because you probably haven't done too much conversation. So you know the basics of names. Maybe. If you're lucky. As you guys are, are walking down, I would assume from the direction of where you're going, you're probably heading towards Crystal Brook. It is the most northern, and if you're you're traveling, especially with some some backgrounds that I've read, it might be kind of the destination of where you know people want to move and see uh, pe people want to move and see the continent. So here's what I'd like everybody to do. Um, I have a basic idea of your passive perception. Uh, let's see here. As you guys are walking, let's see, there's one, there's two. Yeah, pretty much everybody passively who is in the small group are going to notice uh, a male walking down the street in the opposite direction of you. Of course, this will be the basic general description of Farian. Uh, well, since we're, I'm wearing armor and clothes, I'm not gonna tell you what I fully look like. Scale armor clangs about Farian's torso as his belt holds the metal armor in place. Several pouches of brown leather cross against his chest as his sword scabbard hangs just below. A simple strap backpack hangs on Farian's back with rope and torches at its sides. Lastly, his boots climb halfway up his shins where his unarmored legs stand. Yes, so I guess uh, Mila sees him uh, and turns to the rest of her party. Uh, I guess she probably slightly hides behind them as well. Uh, just to kind of uh, blend in with them um, to be a little bit unnoticed, I guess. You're trying to pull an Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I, yeah. I, <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Roll me, roll me a quick stealth. Okay, here we go. First roll. <laughs> First roll. First roll. Crit. Don't mess it up, me. Uh, boom. Oh, pretty nice. Oh, okay, not bad. not bad. Not bad. That it's is a fourteen. A 14. Yep. So with a fourteen, you're you're gonna blend in. Okay. It, now, I will say this. You are blending in with everybody in the group, so though a 14 is good, he would probably have an advantage because there's only, like, three of you. Um, if he really wanted to sneak you out. Um, <laughs> but as you guys continue walking, eventually you get closer and closer and closer until eventually you guys are all but passing each other. I'd say you're about five feet away from one another. Well, in that instance, Barry is going to talk to these adventure-looking types and ask them, Say there, people with gear, and I point to their weapons. Where are you headed to? You look like the adventuring sort. I guess one could say that. 
uh, I myself and a few of my friends here are heading to Crystal Brook. Uh, I'm just stopping there on the way. I don't know what they're doing, though. Wait a second. You say Crystal Brook, yes? Yes. I must be going the wrong way. I I would explain. I, I, I was supposed to hit that town about a day ago. Say, do you mind if I travel upwards with you? That's perfectly fine with me, I guess. What, uh, what do you two think? He doesn't seem like too much trouble, I suppose. It should be fine. Um, it, it's, it's okay. It's fine. Sorry. Why are you on my back like that? Why, why are you standing behind me? Uh, oh, 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 I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was so close to you. Um, I, I can uh, back up a bit. She backs up like maybe like a step or so behind. Uh, well, it, it seems like everyone's in agreement. So sure. I, I'm perfectly fine with it. So let's keep on going then. W- well, what is your name? My name is Farian, and I hold out my hand in a shaking gesture. I, Zachariah will move to Jake's hand. Uh, the name is Zachariah Taloa. Nice to meet you, and it's my honor to at least travel down this road with some nice, cool-looking adventuring types. Yes. I give a nod to Athira and a nod to Myla, since Myla obviously doesn't look like she wants to introduce herself. <laughs> You, you're freaking hiding behind Zachariah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> in that case, I will uh, bow out of the way and let them continue their travels as I follow them, because I have been traveling the wrong way. All right. Here is what's going to happen. I'm going to need somebody roll me a 1D100. Uh, uh, sure, I, I can. can. Okay, uh, Zachariah can do it. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. I'll take flame. It's oh, a two. No. Oh, that is a two. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, we shouldn't let Zachariah roll. He has awful luck. Oh, uh, God, guys. I hey, forgot. Don't worry. I'm saying it for later. I'm, see, it's going to be better get later all on. Of that I, th- I think we, right we kind of need it right now. It looks like we're about to get no, it's mauled. Fine. It's fine. Now, remember, these rolls are a bit random. Low could be good, or low could be <clears throat> could be bad. Um, I'm not going to tell you either way. Of course not. But I will tell you this. I need you guys to roll perception. Hey. Zachariah, your see? two's going to get us killed. I, I rolled good, see? It's saved for later. <laughs> I will at least see it coming. <laughs> oh, wow, look at that. You guys got your 20 <laughs> and your 19 and yeah. your other 19, and here I am with my three. Oh, thanks, guys. Thank, so we thank know you. how we got lost. Very we got the- your back, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. so more than uh, others. That's how he got lost. Cause... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alrighty, so um, it's already been said, but I'm going to go ahead and down the line. Zachariah got a 20, Myla got a 19, Athira, Athira <laughs> got a 19, and Farian got a three. Did I say that one right? Yeah, you did. Sweet. <laughs> two out of four. Two out of four. Farian, Athira, Myla, and Zachariah. Zachariah. Nice. Eventually, I'm just we'll going to start there. being able to say them one at a time all, all the way down, like a like a quick rap. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what is going to be heard by everyone but Farian. <laughs> Off in the distance, just to the right of you, there will be a small outcropping of trees. In the Poke Plains, this isn't very uncommon. Small trees will kind of pop up and, and make kind of a small outcove for small animals like bunnies, maybe a few bears... Um, it's, it's not as big as a forest, nor is it, um, kind of large enough to really be anything more of an outcropping. However, there is going to be a male voice in distress. Something that sounds along the lines of, um, I'm a oh man, will you guys just let me go? <laughs> That's what we hear? Yep. Um, uh, what, what, what was that? Yeah, She's you with- heard it too? Yes, someone's in distress. I... Athira's already heading in the direction of wherever she heard the voice from. <laughs> Athira, shouldn't, we, shouldn't we talk about this? Oh. <laughs> I, 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 excuse Hi-ho. me, miss. 
I, I believe uh, Crystal Brook is that way, and I point continuing down the path as she walks into this the, off the road into into the trees. <laughs> Just come on, and yeah, Zachariah's going to start chasing after her. Okay. Ah. Um... A shortcut, then. Come on, then, person who's shy and, and stutters. Let us go. Uh, uh, okay, it's uh, Myla, but okay. Yeah, she f- and she follows the rest of them. As you guys continue into the brush, um, the trees are going to thicken just a little bit, and then eventually you're going to come to an opening. The clearing is going to be pretty simple. For the most part, it is going to be a few rocks, two to three large rocks, one on one side of a small stream expanding through this clearing. Um, on the other side, there's another large rock. So there's there's one on your side, one on their side. The one on their side is a little bit larger, oblong in shape. And just across this river is a, a large tree, which has been broken. It looks like it may have been struck by lightning and has been dead for a while as moss is growing over it. Um on to the right side of the stream, closest to the end of the clearing, there will be a short rock cliff, just a little bit higher than most of the walls around this river. Um, that one looks to be about 15 feet or so, maybe a small distinction between um, the dirt and the rock itself. Now, this opening is going to have a, a handful of people, probably three men, and another smaller man. Um, this one is a half-elf. Like I said, you're going to be noticing roughly about four people, um, one of which seems to be in distress. The other three seem to be causing the distress. There is a male drow with long hair, um, but he will have his hair back in a ponytail. There will be a halfling with a long sword on his back, and a normal half-elf human, uh, with uh, silver hair and a headpiece. Uh, kind of like one of these... Uh, circlet? Thin or- yes, circlet. It's a very thin, ornate kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Does it have gemstones in it? It does. It has one green gemstone in the center. Just about five feet from them, you are going to notice this scraggly-looking um, half-elf. He's not necessarily a fighter. Um, he's wearing this... Um, Red shirt that looks to be a little bit worn. His hair is a big mess, and he has this really interesting scraggy goatee. And as the other half-elf male just across from him is is pulling his dagger, and he's just kind of waving it a little bit, you're going to hear him go, All right, now hand over the gold, and no one gets hurt. And of course, he will reply, Oh, come on, man. I'm just on a route to get to my bar. Do you really have to fuck with me? Myla leans over to uh, her party and goes, um, We should h- help him, right? I mean, shouldn't and, we? Uh, Farron, with his awful hearing, is not going to hear your soft, quiet, quiet voice. <laughs> you know, wave over and probably attract the attention that we do not need right now. Excuse me, miss! With oh. the nice ears! I've never seen somebody that looks like you! Can we talk? I'm waiting <laughs> to the drow, of course. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, he's an idiot. The rest <laughs> of the group um, of the men will will turn the half-elf with the, with the dagger, turn ever so slightly, look back to the other two. Would you like to deal with those pests? While I get our score, we'll reconvene after. The dark elf will nod, and of course he will pull he will pull two short swords and start making his way over and across the log. The halfling um, will follow right behind. Hey, I heard you guys need some gold. Is it so that you can buy more pretty products? I mean, your hair is quite nice, oh and that circlet's mighty shiny as well. You're very pretty for a young lady, and I'm going to walk forward to meet them on the log. Oh Zachariah is just going to start prepping and start casting mage armor on himself. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's what's going to happen. Uh, because this is progressing quite quickly, I'm going to go ahead and throw up the turn order. Oh, hey. <laughs> Do I get the on. mage armor beforehand or no? Uh, I, will, I will say you're going to be able to get it prepped, and when it comes to your turn, you can cast it. 
<laughs> okay, so I don't have it before. Gotcha. Not yet, no. That's perfectly fine. Uh, just because it seems that immediately this looks like it's going to be a thing. Well, hold on, we're just having a conversation. I just gave them some nice compliments. They're very pretty. Well, their weapons are drawn and they're ready. <laughs> those are some those are some pretty weapons though. <laughs> Damn it. Sorry guys. <laughs> Uh, the pit, the pit of this river. How deep is it? Um, not too deep. We're talking. This water is probably three or four feet deep. No, but I mean the fall to the water. How far is that? Oh, from the fall, that's ten feet. All right, real quick. Is everybody on initiative? Yeah. yeah. Yep. yep. I mean, I'm I'm barely on it with my five. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm lower than you, so it, it's all thematic. It's fine. Um, exactly. I'm not prepared for a fight. I'm a friendly sort. Please don't kill me. <laughs> put this on descending. All right. Top of the order is Zachariah with a 22. Then we have Athira with a 20. We have the mysterious half-elf who is being mugged at a 14. The mysterious <laughs> half-elf who is doing the mugging at a 14. The pretty drow female. Male. <laughs> at a 14. Um, we have the halfling male at an 11. Farian is a five, and Myla is a four. Are we ready to fight? Let's do this. Perfect. Is that you saying it, or is that the, the <laughs> drow guy saying that? Oh, that was me, but that could be his voice from now on. <laughs> oh, I, I, Very deep voice right that now. Is, that is not a very womanly voice. I take back what I said. <laughs> a microphone descends from the heavens. Oh, are you ready to run? Sorry. Let's go, Zachariah. What you gonna do, man? So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kind of like I said before, Zechariah is just at this point. Uh, shit, he's pulling his uh, rapier and he's casting mage armor on himself. Alrighty. And uh, for now, he's just going to move a little bit in front of uh, right here, and that's going to be my turn. Just him prepping himself. Okay. So, next up is Athira. Yeah, she's going to. Um just throw out her arm and toss out a quick sacred flame at the closest guy, the drow coming towards them. So that's a DC 12 deck save. Alright. That's 10. That Ooh. will hit. Nice. Awesome. 7 radiant damage for him. All right. yeah. <laughs> Amazing, I know. <laughs> I've never seen sacred flame hit. I mean, I've never seen it hit. It usually doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's hit on this before either. Uh, I think that would it's be the a one first. time, you guys. It's the only time it's gonna hit. It's fine. and it will never happen again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I guess uh, she's gonna. Um, she'll stay where she is. Never mind. I'll be in my turn. Okay. Well, he is standing. He's not happy. With Athira's turn over, that makes it the scraggly mugging man, like the man who's getting <laughs> mugged. It's his turn. So he's going to turn around and he's going to roll an athletics check to try and climb this rock. That's nine. He, he's going to get about halfway, still struggling. Um, <laughs> he's not going to fall, but I mean, it's, <laughs> it's clear this is not his thing. Um, <laughs> that will make it the man who's mugging him turn. <laughs> Um, so this half-elf, who is, is of course, mugging the other half-elf, will move five, ten feet up to the rock. Um, he is going to grab this man, and he is going to try and pull him down. That's a 12. That's a 22. Oh. Oh. Wow. Yeah. I want Good to see job. something real quick, and I'm going to roll a 1d100 for it. Good job, red shirt man. That's a 30. Um, Why is he, the red shirt doing good? <laughs> <laughs> he is going to grab this dude's shirt and of course it, it seems to be a button up and immediately the dude climbing is going to disrobe the shirt to get away <laughs> it's not even all that skilled he has another shirt underneath he's just like nope don't need this anymore and he just pulls it right off it's like he's he's thought about this for this occasion. It's like, I'm going to wear a shirt. <laughs> just in case. So, with that happening, we have the drow, who is now going to make his move. So that is 5, 10, 
5, 10, 15, and 20, which will get him across the log. He'll drop another 5 feet, which will get him down and right next to you guys. Immediately, <laughs> he's going to swing. Uh, first one at Zachariah. Oh, boy. What did Zachariah do? He's there. That's a 22 okay. to hit. Yeah, that is. Play. That is six damage. I'm fine. Oof. I'm fine. All right. And I'm the fine. second swing will be at Farian. That's an eight. Uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to say that's a no for me, Chief. All right. That will end his turn. The uh, halfling is going to move 5, 10, 15, 20, and then 25. Hop off the thing here. <laughs> he is going to attempt to pull his weapon. Let's see an athletics check. He is going to fail pulling his weapon. Um, it What's definitely. His weapon? It is a. Is a, it's like this really long greatsword. Oh. Oh. oh yeah. And he's, a, and he's a halfling. He is a halfling. Um. It, it definitely. You get the feeling by hi- seeing him struggle. It was mostly for show. Yeah, Aww. somebody's compensating. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, hey, I'm talking about the halfling's height. Okay, <laughs> let me be clear. <laughs> All right. That will make it Sferian's turn. No, nope. pretty people. I, I don't know what this uh this stabbing's all about, but if you're gonna stab, you're gonna have to do it right. And with that, I'm gonna step over here, and I'm not drawing my sword, but I do have my shield out, so I'm gonna go for a shove, try and push him back on this log he just crossed. Okay. So, that'll be an athletics, yeah. Yeah, and it's kind of like a grapple. He would roll against that, correct? Oh uh, yeah, with like an acrobatics or an athletics up to him. Cool. That's gonna fail. All right then, I push him five feet back onto the log. All right. I'm gonna have and to have him roll an acrobatics because he's up on the log, or, or, or a dex roll. So he's up on the log. Oh, so that log's slippery then. A little slippery, but that's okay because he is going to roll a 19. So as those rolls went, um, 18 athletics. He rolled a nine, which failed, and then rolled a 19 to his save. And before I end my turn, I'm gonna move forward and close the gap, and I'm gonna. Wink to this halfling guy who can't really get it up. It's okay, buddy. It will come eventually. And hmm. I have my turn. Hmm. Alright. That will make Oh, wait. I one. just realized what I said. <laughs> oh, man. Good. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I was like, why is everybody laughing? I'm just making anything up being an asshole. But then I got it. I was like, oh, wow. Alrighty. Myla. Um... So she's gonna see that like, um, the yeah, party's got take take care of the drow and the halfling. So she's actually gonna go after the uh, the uh, half elf doing the mugging. Okay. And she is going to firebolt him. Let's see it. That is a fifteen nice. to hit. Unfortunately, that is gonna miss. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. So yeah, I guess it probably like she sees that it misses and she just kind of then uh backs up behind this log if I can move her. Well, on the bright side, he definitely noticed the hurling bolt of fire after him, so <laughs> if nothing else, it caught his attention. Yeah, she didn't think that through. <laughs> That's right. why she's she's deciding to hide behind the log. It's like, oh, crap. <laughs> Alrighty. That would make it Zachariah's turn. Alright. Uh... <sighs> Yeah, I think with this, Zechariah is just going to, before this man can even get an attempt to hit him, mm-hmm. uh, Zechariah is just going to like kind of swing to the side a little bit as he has his beard, kind of do a faint attack into okay. the half. That is going to miss. <sighs> uh, all right. That was my turn. The worst part is you had advantage and you rolled two nines. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that happened. With a plus five. With, With a plus, plus five. five. Yeah, that's like... I mean, you could try talking to the halfling. I mean, <laughs> he can't draw his weapon, you can't swing yours, you got something in common. That's not anything. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. 
Oh, and the smack talk starts at group two. <laughs> <laughs> it was inevitable. Alrighty, that will make it Athera's turn. Right. Does Athera notice that um, Mila has caught the attention of the other half elf? <laughs> I would say yeah. At the second a giant fireball was released. Yeah. 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 <laughs> not very subtle. Okay, so nah. I mean, it's really cool, but like, yeah, it's not very <laughs> subtle. She's gonna move forward a bit and uh, take out her short bow and try to shoot an arrow at him. Okay. That's 19 to hit. That's 19 Ooh. to hit. That will hit. Awesome. So he takes 8 piercing damage. Nice. <laughs> oh god, okay. Um, <laughs> immediately he gets struck in the shoulder by an arrow. If anybody is close enough, and actually, you know what, Farian, real quick, roll me a perception roll. Me? Perception? I I, I don't know. I don't know if I can do that. (laughs) You're the closest one. I believe in you. You believe in me? Uh, I'm going to disappoint you there. Oh my god. A non-natural one. There was a two with a negative one. I'm so proud. Okay, so... I take that back. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, don't okay. don't don't put your faith in me. We have a cleric for Pete's sake. That's that's the one you, you pray to. All right, well, let's see. Athera is five feet behind him. Go ahead and roll me a perception with disadvantage. Fifteen. Not bad. <laughs> so Athera is gonna notice the tears start to well in his eyes Aww. as Aww. he he immediately drops the blade, drops the shirt, pulls off the jacket, and is like, "Screw it, I'm out," and runs and off in the distance. You basically here sobbing. Oh. And then when she sees him start running, she's like, that's what you get, you baby! Who am I adventuring with? Demons. <laughs> Alrighty, in the turn order, next up is the dude who um, was being robbed, the, the half-elf being robbed. Immediately seeing this man tuck tail and run, he's going to slide down the rock, He's going to pull out a canister and grab uh, a pebble from it. Then pull from his pocket a slingshot. And he is going to aim um, at a distance of, let's see here, 25 feet towards that guy. So uh, the the drow just across the the river. 18, Hmm. that's going to hit. Well, uh, you haven't seen damage. Two damage! But it is going to smack the drow in the side of the head, giving him quite a nice little knot. There was an attempt. There was an attempt. He's just like, off in the corner, he's like, Yeah! There's more where that came from! I love him. Of course, he will bend down shortly after. Um, He's getting ready to pick up the items that were dropped, but he can't do it at this time. So, it is the Drow's turn. Squaring off against Farian right above the bridge. Let's roll some attacks, shall we? Please don't. That's going to hit. That is a 20. Let's take some damage. Uh, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still counts. That's all right. That is five damage. It's not as alright, but I'll take it. Alrighty. And the second swing. Ooh, I could get knocked out from the next one. Potentially. You have a decent armor class, though. Mm. That'd be so- not that oh, decent. Wait. That's a 19 plus 5. That is a 24 to hit. Oof. Yeah. Well, hey, in all fairness, I mean, he is dual wielding, so he doesn't add modifier to the next one, please. Yeah. Unless he doesn't have dual wielding. Optimism! Oh. Alright, roll that damage. Let's Six go. Six damage. I I am still there with one HP. There you go. Nice. Woo. He's gonna look to you and goes, uh, did I get it right this time? <laughs> uh Halfling's turn. I He is going to pull out this little letter letter opener that's in his boot and attempt to stab at um <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> He's gonna attempt to stab <laughs> who, at who Zachariah. Who are these guys? Did 19 <laughs> break your armor class? <laughs> yeah, it, it <laughs> Oh my god. That's two. Yeah. No, no, it's still- I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> I had two HP! Oh man. Alright, you know what that means. We're gonna have to have some death saving rolls next time. It is, well, the next round, really, because you start the next round. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right, Farian, you're up. <laughs> All right then, buddy, your attitude stinks. And with that, I'm gonna use my second wind. So let me just, oh, it doesn't have an auto roll to it. So let me do this. For Fuck. viewers who do not know what second wind is, it is a fighter ability. You have a limited wellspring of stamina that you can evoke at any given time. You gain 1d10 plus your fighter level in hit points. That's a really nice ability that fighters get. So that is uh, two plus one, so you regain three health. All right, I'm at four. My my sword wounds from this guy are not looking too happy, but they are looking fresh with blood. I'm going to try and propose something. Can I grab this halfling guy like a grapple and swing him into the other dude? Um, let's roll it. Nat one. <laughs> a 22 on that halfling. Okay, let's see his athletics roll. I'm getting good rolls. I'm happy. Yeah, you're doing great. That's a 15. So he is Shit. equivalently grappled. As I grab him, I swing him into the guy on the log. So here's what here's what here's the thing though. Grappling mm -hmm. is an option. Uh, it is an action. Yeah. So if you want to swing him, you're going to have to wait till the next turn. Cuz that would so be another if... action cuz you're going to be using your grapple oh. to move him into the other guy. Hmm. In that case, Okay, I thought, dang it. I'm going to give a wink to Athera and say, please keep me up, as, as a bit of blood trickles out of my mouth from the damage I've taken. Okay. And I end my turn. Let's go, boys. All right. Myla. Okay, so the halfling is grappled by fairy, and correct? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, she was going to hit that, but I guess... Um, hmm... Can Myla try to still hit the halfling? No, I, no, no, let's not do that. Oh, that that would be dumb. Uh, she's gonna just fireball the drow. Alrighty. Yeah, so let's do this thing. Oh, god. That's a six. That is gonna miss. Um, Myla, I would like you to roll me a 1d100. Your window of opportunity to hit him, as you can see, was fairly slim. Um, it's either going to hit this uh, rock slash uh, branch that you're sitting right next to, or there is a potential if it goes horribly awry, it, it might hit Athera. Oh no! Oh no! Thirty-eight. You're good. It's <gasps> actually going to go up into the air. Okay, good. Oh, oh god. <laughs> Maybe it was an inflection with your wrist. Maybe who knows? But it didn't go exactly the way you wanted. Okay. Um, That's up in the air is better than at my friend. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Zachariah, Sweet. we're gonna so need I... Oh, that is a one. Oh. Oh. I'm still good. I'm still alive. It's as long okay. as no one hits me. Yeah, it's it's just one one Actually that's two fails because it's a critical. Yeah, two fails. Alright. Well, a theory sees him go down, so she's gonna run over with the cure wounds on him because honestly that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's seven. Yeah. Yay. So she pulls you up. She's like, we're not done with the fight yet. Get up. Pick it back up. Come on. <sighs> Alright. Alrighty. Next up is the half-elf, who, of course, was getting robbed. He is going to, of course, pin down and pick up the jacket. And throw it over his shoulder. And then stretch back a bullet in the slingshot and whip it off let's see that is a 10 to hit which will miss that will uh, end his turn so that makes it the dual fighter uh, the, the dual swordsman drow mm -hmm. of course yeah. you know squaring off against you who is unfortunately grappled against somebody else wait I'm grappled? You're grappling somebody else. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if there's any kind of thing that goes against you. However, both of your arms are kind of around this guy in order to grapple him, or at least one, which would open you up to... I would... I hate to say it, but give him advantage. Oh, shit. Yeah, because you kind of... You've, you've turned your attention from in front of you to the left of you, and this guy is directly left of you. 
So you're literally turning your body in order to get the power to heave him over towards the drown. So you're literally giving him an opening. Okay, I see. Well, let's roll with it. Let's see how it goes. All right. First is 19. Yeah, that's going to hit. Well, I have four health going down. Oh, no. Come on, roll that damage. Let's go. Seven damage. All right. I'm at <gasps> negative three. Come on, stab me while I'm in the ground. Well, luckily for you, this gentleman has no interest whatsoever in murder. He is going to turn and look to the halfling who is now freed. Come on, Gris, let's go. And he's going to start moving. Now, with Farian down and somebody just getting up, he's going to attempt to move real quick. However, this will give Athera an attack of opportunity. Do I not get a a disadvantage attack of opportunity with being down? You would as well. I was I was getting there, but you would get one oh. with disadvantage. All right, sorry. Oh, that's quite all right. Sorry. See, there I can add two more no. no. He stabbed you with a letter opener. He's like, this is personal now. <laughs> <laughs> I am not your male. <laughs> all right. Oh wait, so I get attack of opportunity as well. Yes, you do. All right, she's still got her bow out, so I'm gonna take a shot at him. Roll. That's an eight. That Probably one miss. Awesome. All right. So with him taking the strike, he will not be down. That will gouge his, his his left side. He will be bleeding pretty bad. But he is going to continue hobbling. So that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Of course, that would make it Farian's turn. Farian, can we have a death saving throw? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Let's go. That's a fail, I believe. Mm, that is a fail. All right, then. One fail. That's okay, guys. <laughs> See, you're doing better than me. Yeah, look at it that way. <laughs> All right, so Myla. Uh, Myla is going to actually cast message to the uh, half elf, um, yeah. and she's like, "Are, are you okay? Um, do, do, do you like want help or anything? Um, let me know." The half elf will peek his head up, look around curiously, like, "What the hell was that?" She kind of pops up behind the locks, like kind of ways like eh, me oh, sorry like boss back behind <laughs> yeah, he's definitely not going to put two and two together I don't even think he would see you um, on okay. his turn I can roll for his perception okay but we'll have to wait a little bit yeah no, 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 no. That's, oh. but that's her turn however this is Zachariah it is your turn what would you like to do uh, Zachariah's going to get up uh, damn those bastards uh, come on just kind of you know, hobble over and uh, hit a uh, Farron with a uh, a cure wounds. That is a oh. ten. Ten health. Nice. nice. Now, since I was at negative three, should I go to seven or should I go to ten? When healing, always start at zero. Nice. Come on, friend. Uh, we've still got a little bit more work to do. Uh, sorry. I'm uh, sorry. No, it's fine. Me. I'm just like moving like right here. Okay. Yeah, there you go. I'm in my turn. Okay, moving across the log. Good. Now, here's the thing. Because you were on the log, this thing is not narrow. It's not wide enough for more than one person to cross. So yeah. because you can get there, even if Farian could move past you, right? If he mm-hmm. could move up to you, which he can, on his turn, if you haven't moved closer to the guys, he can't get past you. Alrighty, that would make this a theorist turn. Alright, um... I guess she's going to move up a little because she's kind of blocked by everybody on the look to do anything. So she's going to move up there and she is going to guess cast Firebolt at the drow. Alrighty. Uh, that is a seven to hit. It's okay. Yeah. There's, an, there's another giant fireball in the midst of nowhere. <laughs> By the way, we're gonna light this <laughs> this forest on fire before we're done, you guys. I mean, they'll have nowhere to hide, you know. Uh, there we go. We're Boy. really Boy. trying to turn these planes into planes of nothing. <laughs> on the bright side, um, after the um, after the spell that was in his head speaking to him, we are gonna have the half elf here who was getting mugged kind of take a look around, do a quick perception check. That's a twenty. He is going to have noticed Myla. 
and then he's going to also notice the fire. <laughs> which is started in a small kind of small fireplace kind of area, but there's not a lot of brush to catch. So he's going to start taking his time and move to... Let's see. There is one and two that have landed on the ground so far. So he's going to move over to the first one. About right here. And he's going to start stomping on it. Um, <laughs> we're going to roll survival real quick. One. That is a 14. He will su- yeah. With a 14, <laughs> he will successfully stomp out the, the small fire from your spell. However, another one will start probably about 15, 20 feet away from him. So, um, you know, eventually somebody will get to it. Um, so that will make it the drow's turn and the halfling just after that. Drow is going to move five and then another 25 off the map. Halfling will move 5, 10, 15, and then move another 10 off the map. Boy. So, Farron will use half of his movement to stand up. Ah, I love seeing pretty faces when I'm nursed back to health. Thank you, Zachariah. (laughs) And with that, since I can't really cross the log, if I were to stand on the tip of this rock over here, could I still see the halfling? You can attempt it. All right. Can I go 5, 10, 15? Yep. G- gonna, can, I still, can I see the halfling? Uh, you can just barely ever so much catch a bit of his clothing as he starts to run through the brush and trees out of the, the small clearing here. So you, you might get just the last bit of him. Hmm. Fuck it, I'm going to try it anyways. Going to take a pot that's hanging at the side of my backpack and chuck it. A a pot? (laughs) Yeah, a good pot. Alrighty, we're entangled now. Let's roll that. Oh, wait, that's Pam. Let's go ahead and... uh, You're just chucking this thing, right? Yeah, it should be an attack roll disadvantage. Yeah, okay. Because I can, like, barely see him, right? Yeah. Alright, then. Let's see, boys. Alright, we're going with a 16 plus 3. Oh, just pretend it's a 19. <laughs> uh, so with a 19, that's going to hit. All right. Um, improvised range weapons, 1d4 plus strength damage, yeah? Mm-hmm. All right, then. Let's let's roll this this, de- this deadly pot. Look at that. Six bludgeoning. <sighs> Almost. <laughs> He's going to take this hit. You're going to hear a ping <laughs> off in the distance. <laughs> You're going to hear a... <laughs> Man, I should have thrown some hard tack. It would have done more damage. Who the hell throws a pot? <laughs> me, and you better not mess with me again unless you want some more pot, you hear? And I end my turn. With that, that is going to take us out. They are going to re-enter the brush. You guys, if you want, you can continue. However, the fireball that was fired just at them before they reach the other side of the forest, that's going to have started to grow at this point. Um, I would say that would probably be the more important thing to take care of unless you want to burn down this entire small outcropping. From the point that Varian's standing on on this rock, is it more than a 10-foot drop? Uh, I I would say it's roughly about 12. Okay, well, hmm. is there a way I could move down there without hurting myself? I mean, you could. It the water is deep enough that you could potentially just sort of plunge plunge yourself down there. At the Twelve feet, you're going to be okay if you jump into a ten to fifteen foot water area. All right then. Um, in that case, can I reach over this ledge between Zachariah and I and pass in my water skin? I'd say yeah. That's roughly about five feet. All right. Uh, I I pass him the water skin without any words. Hopefully, he knows what to do with it. <laughs> that girl, <I'll> take it. <sighs> All right. Uh, can I also then jump into the water, and then I'll let that will be like the end of what I do. Sure. We. <laughs> I'm I'm, un, I'm under the log. I, I didn't like face plant the log. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's. I mean, let's roll in athletics. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, sh- <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I was about to be like, oh no. <laughs> this could go very good or very bad. So, um, as this fire is going on, of course, we have Zachariah and the half-elf 
kind of moving towards it. Um, the half elf, of course, is going to attempt to stomp on it to put it out. Is it possible that Myla can try to use prestidigitation to try to like snuff out the fire? Um, so now it's good for like a small campfire. I'm, just, I'm not sure how big this fire is now. Um, it, it's roughly about the size of a small campfire. Okay. Um, let's see. What is the distance on prestidigitation? That's a good question. I believe it's like ten feet. Yeah. Uh, it, it is ten feet. Okay. Uh, how deep is the water? Ten feet. <laughs> Okay, uh, she's going to jump down Okay. Uh, and run across and then try to jump back up uh, the... The other side? Well, yeah, the other side. So here's the thing. Going through the water would be technically be difficult terrain. Uh-huh. And then climbing up that small hill on the other side would also be considered rough terrain. Yeah. So moving through those would cost you double your speed. Okay. Um... Let's see, that would be 5 to come down, uh, 10, 15 to get through the water, 20, 25 to get up the hill, and then, yeah, you've got uh, about 5 feet of movement. Um, so she's going to just stand there for now, because that's all she can do. Well, just diagonally from you is where the fire is, about right okay. here. Oh, okay, yeah, so she can, um, yeah, so she gets there and she press the dissertation, just... All Try right. to snuff snuffs it out. With press digitation, that fire will be sufficiently out. You guys are now amongst the brush with a half elf male. He's standing roughly five six five seven. Um, a little bit on the scrawny side, but he is going to move um, five feet closer to this bush. And grab this uh, really large traveling backpack. Um, have you ever seen the movie um, Hotel Transylvania? Yes. You know Johnny's backpack? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's about that size. Okay. <laughs> he'll pick up this backpack and he'll look towards you guys and go, Wow, thanks, guys. <laughs> and and right as he says, Wow, thanks, guys, uh, since Sparrow doesn't know the fire's been put out, um... He's just chucking water upwards by scooping it into a shield. So, upwards. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, as I'm, it's the medieval make it rain. There you go, boys. He doesn't have the pot to make it rain at the moment. I have a shield and I, I have a cooking pan and I have my hands. Roll me a quick survival and let's see how drenched the people in about a uh, 15 oh, foot radius from you in that direction will get. All right then. There, there you go, guys. Oh, for, I, I do well, and it's and it's a shitty time to do well. Awesome. Oh man. So, <laughs> Zachariah and Mila, you're gonna get a nice little splash of water over you. It's okay. gonna dampen you, but it's not going to soak you. I mean, Mila did just run through the water, so yeah. Just stop. <sighs> He's gonna just. I'm like... helping. Is it out yet? <laughs> it's been out. Athira's like, no, I don't. I don't think it's out yet. You should keep. You should keep going. I think you should keep going. It's going great. <laughs> I will. I you will should keep stop. Doing that then. And he's gonna throw the water skin back towards Baron. <laughs> there. Uh, you. And he's gonna point at the uh, backpack man. Mm-hmm. What is it I can do for you? Yeah. Well, <sighs> what are you doing out here in the middle of the? Woods? I, I'm traveling. Where? Where? Can I ask that? Also, I'm sorry about the fire. Oh, it's if fire happens, I guess. Um, I'm 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 heading to uh, to Crystal Brook. Um, to my inn. Oh, well, oh, one um, of them. We're, we're heading to Crystal Brook as well. Oh, uh, wonderful. Um, do you, you mind you if ha- I travel with you? I see no reason not to. Uh, it's safer to stay in pairs, and it seems you have bad luck, friend. Myla hides Sometimes. behind this rock. So, all right, he's going to pull a pipe. He is going to um, take this. Uh, it's um, it's like a metallic thin piece of metal. And he's going to strike it up against his torso, and a light will start of a small flame. And he'll puff on the pipe. 
a horrible smell is going to come out of it. I throw more water. <laughs> I smell smoke! I'm just moving out of the way at this point. Not even going to are you fast enough, though? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so, of course, you are going to splash water. Um, he is going to take five step over into the brush. Of course, because you are only going to throw about a 15 foot, you are going to not get him. Um, and he's just going to kind of look to the others with like his hands raised like, what? <laughs> what, what, uh, what is that? Let's just call it tobacco. <laughs> what's, what, what's tobacco? Um, it's what you smoke. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> what's your guys' name? My name is Zechariah Talor. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice Ooh. to meet you. What about your heroic friends here? By the uh, not answer. During this time, can I be making my way up to them? Sure. Yeah, Thera's gonna try to cross the, the tree to get over to everybody else, because I just realized she was still over on the other side and had paying attention to that. You say Athera is a clumsy person? Um... Yes. <laughs> so yes. well, what's her dexterity? I, her yes. dex... It, don't, her <laughs> dex is 14. <laughs> okay, no, she'd be fine. So, um, as you guys kind of get closer, of course, he will... Uh, smile and, and tilt his pipe. Hi! Um, you can call me Scoob. Seems like you were having a run of bad luck there. Uh, oh, I, I normally don't come into this kind of problem. Most times people ignore me. <laughs> uh, I walk up to him and hold up my hand a uh, shaking gesture. He'll, he will, of course, shake it. Well, today you've met two groups that didn't ignore you. Say, do you usually lose gold in your travels? No. Normally I make it. Um, I'm quite the philanthropist. Very good. I read that on a book. And he kind of, he kind of, <laughs> he leans over towards Zachariah's sort of area and he just puts a, a hand over his face. Like, I read that in a book. <laughs> he, he just puts his hand out. I don't think that means what you think it means. <laughs> <laughs> he will, of course, shake your hand as well. So, well, I will, I will leave you to your tobacco. I need to go look for my pot. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll go with you. If I see these people, we'll take care of them. So, I mean, I mean, you guys kind of saved my hide. I, I'm kind of packing a lot of stuff. If if you want, and you're headed towards Crystal Brook, and we're all going the same place, I, I can offer you a, a a night to stay at the Rusty Barnacle too. Do you expect to be attacked anymore on your way? I've I've never run into any problems before now, but uh, I don't know. I mean, there's so, always so, the so, possibility. So, um, what changed that they attacked you this time? If you don't mind me asking, I'm sorry. Um, well, eh, nothing really. It, they I, they must have seen me do a bit of trade in 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 my other inn in the other town, just south of here, Hollymead. Uh, but, uh, you know, the people starting out in the whole bandit situation, they look for the easiest score, and, well, I'm, I'm not really packing weapons, am I? Well, to tell you um, what, friend, you don't look like easy score with a backpack like that. My god, I think I'd crumble under such a weight. Well, my job keeps me a little busy. Uh, Farian, if you would, roll me a survival check to see if you can locate your pot. With advantage, because <laughs> you're getting help. Can I do a perception to see the other people? So I got a five to find my pot. Okay. Uh, with a perception of 20, you're going to find um, that there are broken twigs and, and kind of small leaves that have been ripped from trees in the direction that they've gone, but nothing of them whatsoever. With a five, unfortunately, you're, you're not really... The pot must have flown into a bush or something, but you're not able to find this pot. Oh, quick question. Pot. <laughs> <laughs> Can Athera look for her arrows? I know she hit with one, but she missed with the other. Is uh, there... Yeah, you can go ahead and roll, um, I guess if you're... Yeah, I'll, I'll say, because you're, you were aiming in pretty specific spots, I would say you would be able to... Um, you shot two, correct? 
Yeah, well, the first one hit, so did he take it with him, or did he oh, yeah. pull it out and leave it behind? No, 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 that one with him. That's still lodged okay. in okay, his Okay, so arm. there's just one somewhere. Okay. Yep. Uh, do, me a gonna... quick, do me a quick check. Roll me a 1d10. If it's above a 5, then it's unbroken. If it's below, it was potentially broken when it hit something that it shouldn't. Okay. 10. Can I note that Athera was good at finding her arrow? <laughs> sure. <laughs> hey, uh, excuse me, Miss Arrow Finder. Could you uh, help me find my pot? <laughs> I I suppose. Where did you leave it? <laughs> I uh, I threw it at the the guy who couldn't lift his weapon. Ah, good on you then. All right. So do can I offer him assistance if he looks more? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he can do he can do the same roll with advantage this time. Okay. Okay. Uh, should I make a new roll? Yeah. Yep. It's a different search. So. Yeah. And now I find secret treasure on this one. There you go. <laughs> Roll the 20 from the first one. Hey. <laughs> um, here is what's going to happen. You are going to find your pot, and you are going to find something also separate. There's going to be a scroll, cra- a scroll case on the ground. Now, you're unaware if there's anything in it just yet, but it does feel like it's got a little bit of weight to it. Can I make like a recall of memory to see if I saw this on the guys that were running away? Sure. Because, I mean, I might have dislodged it with my pot. (laughs) Uh, Would that be like an intelligence or recall memory? Yeah, just do a straight up intelligence roll. Okay, then. Mm, That's three. I don't (laughs) quite remember anything like that. Uh, Can I do an arcana check to see if I. This thing is magic or not, or like if I know anything about it? Well, before that, uh. Uh, since I found my pot and found the scroll, I'm going to turn to Athera. Here, since you helped me find my pot, this is for you. Oh, thank you? I give her a thumbs up as I smuggle my <laughs> pot back into my backpack. God, I feel like a five-year-old, I'm sorry. But you have just been handed a, a scroll holder. Okay. Um, yeah, I just want to check it to see if I can figure out what it is, or just open it up to see what it is. I don't know. Something. <laughs> you can open it. Um, you can take a look at the scroll. Um, if you want to know what the scroll is, you can roll an Arcana check just to kind of see if you can read what abouts it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This, can, I, can I help her? <laughs> uh, She's like peering sure. over my shoulder and being like, hey. <laughs> what you so, got up there? <laughs> She's so interested in this thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if she's helping, that's ad- is that advantage? Or is that. Yeah, that just would give you advantage. Thing. That's the help action. Cool. Mm-hmm. 21. Woo! You don't need my help. With a 21, you are going to get a spell of Arcane Lock. Ooh. One-time scroll. One-time scroll. Okay. Nice. This wasn't all useless. Did they drop that spell, do you think? I mean, it's possible. They were the only ones out here other than us, and I don't think any of us had it it wasn't mine. But uh, were any of the magic users? I mean, I don't well, think it, it's a fairly traveled road. I mean, anybody could have lost something. Okay, yeah, no, you're right. It's the ones that shimmer that you gotta worry about. <laughs> uh, I once met a man who found a cursed sock and tried to make a sock puppet with his hand. Now he can't get the sock off. I'm gonna step away from you. <laughs> My friend Scoob, tell me more about Mr. Sock Puppet Man. This sounds amazing. And while we speak on this story, let's walk on to our next destination. Let's get out of here. With this, um, you guys are going to continue out of the brush and into the Poke Plains again, slowly making your way through that small outcropping. As you continue on, he tells you the tale of this man. Um, It was fairly simple. He went shortly after... The cursed item was attached to his hand and had it removed by uh, a preacher from the local church. Um, However, there was a harsh judgment as uh, what man in his right mind puts a sock on a person's hand. Um, And why would anybody in the world want to ever curse a sock? Um, Anyway, with that weird (laughs) and unusual tale, I think as you guys make your way towards Crystal Brook, and your journey continues onward. We're going to stop there. 
for the next couple of adventures of Group 2. Uh, <laughs> thank you all for for showing up tonight and, and recording an episode with me. I'm, I can't wait for more. I can't mm-hmm. wait either. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name's Corey, and I play the Dungeon Master. <laughs> um, I want to thank everybody for coming and listening to Episode 9. We had so much fun playing this, as if you couldn't hear by all the laughter. just wanted to shout out to you guys. You know, Follow us and subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, Google Play. If you want to send us an email, head to opportunityroll.podcast at gmail.com. You can, you know, hit me up, hit any of the players up. We'll make sure that they get the the emails, and we'll try to write something back to you. Head over to our Patreon and check out some magical swag that could be awaiting you. We've just recently set that up, and we're pretty excited of some cool stuff that we can do for anybody who who wants to help us grow and expand. Also, don't forget to check out our Facebook um, at Opportunity Roll. And, of course, you know, we also have a YouTube, which, you know, me and Winter, every so often we'll put out a nice video updating you on what's going on outside of game. I want to thank Purple Planet um, for the music that we use for most of our episodes. I also want to thank Cobalt Press. Of course, I'm still using that Tome of Beasts. And really, I want to thank you guys, because it has been so much fun so far and even if nobody had listened we're still having a ball but I know there are those out there who are and for that I thank you and remember everybody keep your opportunities open <laughs>